Uh, today, I will talk about the systematic renormalization in the effective field theory of large scale structure. This uh, based on work, based on a collaboration with Mehdad Mirbawai and Renrico Payer. I hope that this work uh, appear in the archive in near future. So, uh, here is the outline of my talk. First of all, I will, put this, I will, stuff, uh, I will start off by uh, some brief uh, discussion about current status of early universe cosmology, and then I will move on to some background materials which I need for the rest of my talk, and uh, then I will introduce the concept of non-locality in time, and accordingly, the convective flows and shift terms which would appear as a result of non-locality in time, and then, after all, I will introduce, I will explain how to introduce new counter terms in the theory, or correction, new correction in theory, and some practical remedies. So, thanks to the uh, vast data, thanks to the vast cosmological data, inflationary paradigm, or theory, uh, becomes a prominent and uh, somehow most plausible theory of the early universe, though there are some debates around this stuff. I, I mean, you, uh, you saw uh, some debate between Justin and Matthias last week. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the inflation more than solving three puzzles of a standard model cosmology predicts some small fluctuations as the seeds of the larger scale structures. Um, at least we have two laboratories for checking the predictions of our inflationary models. One is CMB and the other is larger scale structure of the universe. Planck tell us that the primordial fluctuations if inflationary paradigm is true, the primordial fluctuation must be almost scale invariant, Gaussian, and adiabatic. And uh, what about the larger scale structure? Mm, we are living in an era that we have uh, precise surveys aligned with huge uh, computational power. So uh, it's, uh, there is an increasing need for insight from theoretical sides of the game. This is the, somehow the motivation that we are working on the larger scale structure. Effective field theory of larger scale structure, a standard perturbation theory, Lagrangian perturbation theory, and stuff like this. This is the motivation. What we do for the CMB is sketch here, getting some initial power, putting in some transfer function, finding some CL multiples, checking with the uh, observations. And in, in a more or less fashion, similar fashion, we use the similar, uh, we have the similar game for the larger scale structure of universe, uh, putting initial conditions, uh, getting initial condition from some theory of uh, uh, early universe cosmology, putting in some perturbation theory, for example, SPT, LPT, another kind of PT, N O L O P T, you know, et cetera, and or using effective field theory of larger scale structure aligned with some simulations such as millennium illustrates, et cetera. Uh, we find uh, we have uh, some prediction for the power spectrum the, of the matter, and we can check this power spectrum uh, with the observations. So, uh, Let's, let me start with some uh, background material which is needed uh, for uh, the rest of my talk. Uh, Matthias, uh, tell us about this equation. These are uh, the equation governing the evolution of the large scale structure perturbation. The first equation is just continuity equation and the second one is Euler equation. Uh, we implicitly assume that the, there is no, uh, the, we, we, we assume that the velocity is potential and we just enter the divergence of velocity here, which is called theta here. As Matthias told us, these equations are just applicable on larger scale. And uh, we need some correction to be added to, the, this, in, uh, to this equation if you want to incorporate the effect of the smaller scale. Uh, the procedure we use, the procedure uh, we use 
We use it to find the correction. It's called somehow effective filter of larger scale structure. This is, uh, in, this is completely in the, similar to what we did in uh, typical usual quantum field theory. We calculate the loop corrections and try to renormalize it. And we found some uh, finite correction. And then this will, added, this will be added to the equation of motion. This set of equation can be solved when equipped with the uh, Poisson equation. The, the, process, uh, the process of integrating out short modes in order to find an effective field theory for, for large modes is called, sometimes called coarse graining. The coarse graining is a famous uh, word which is uh, usually war, uh, use, which has many uses in uh, molecular dynamic mechanical engineering civil, uh, civil engineering etc for example when try to um, uh, simulate or uh, phenomenologically simulate some granular material people usually use the coarse graining procedure to uh, interpret the for example material or stuff like this so uh, so much for the background, but uh, I, I should uh, explain uh, something which is, uh, uh, which is not introduced just as for aesthetic reasons. It's not just cosmetic. It's very useful present representation of the perturbation theory. The two equations can be in the two equations I've shown in the previous slide can be encapsulated in a doublet called psi. Okay. We, 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 which contains density contrast and uh, the divergence, velocity divergence uh, normalized with H. Uh, when uh, we use this presentation for the field fluctuation, for the fluctu matter fluctuation, the resulting equation of motion, both equation of motion can be unified in this form. And uh, this, this is the left-hand side is a homogeneous equation which can be solved to find the linear evolution of perturbation and the right-hand side showed nonlinearity or interaction terms in, same, in similar fashion, fashion as what we saw in quantum field theory. The nonlinear interactions present here are uh, these four uh, interactions which are shown here. Uh, this interaction term and this interaction are uh, important for me, and I will come back to this interaction. I'll explain. I have some physical explain for th these two interactions. Mm, as uh, usual, as quantum field theory, we can uh, show, we can have some uh, diagrammatic presentation of this theory through Feynman rules, propagators, and vertex, vertices, uh, which are depicted here. The details are not important for the rest of my talk, because uh, in light of short time which I had, I cannot go to details, and I sh will show. I will try to uh, ignore the details. So, uh, the the important point of my talk is that the meaning of the systematic renormalization in the effective field theory of larger structure. What's the meaning of the systematic renormalization? Effective field theory of larger scale structure is a non-renormalizable theory in a sense that we have to introduce infinite number of counter terms to cancel all the divergences or cutoff dependencies of theory. But uh, I I'd like to draw your attention to a quote in Weinberg book, volume one. I will read the, his own words. As long as we include every one of the infinite Number of interaction allowed by symmetries. The so-called non-renormalizable theories are actually just as renormalizable as renormalizable theories. It's very famous. In this sense, the effective field theory of larger scale association is a renormalizable theory. But in this, in the systematic in the systematic renormalization prescription, embedding lower order loop diagrams in higher order ones does not lead to genuinely new corrections or counter terms. We call these loop diagrams reducible or in analogy with the particle physics one particle reducible diagrams. I will explain what I mean by reducible diagrams here. 
this diagram and this diagram are reducible diagrams, which means that by cutting this line, we will find this diagram here. And uh, for those who are familiar, for those uh, who are familiar with the uh, standard perturbation theory, these two diagrams are constituents of B411. And we expect that these two diagrams, which are reducible diagrams, should be, uh, should be renormalized without need for any addition or without need for any new counterterms. And they should be renormalized just by embedding the counterterms of one loop, uh, one loop correction to the power spectrum. But uh, we found that it's impossible to do this to do renormalize this theory, but just by embedding the counter term which people introduced for P31, as you may know, to the, these two reducible diagrams. What was the problem? There was two problems here. Uh, we showed that without invoking two doublet representation I've shown you before, and without uh, including non-local counter terms, it's impossible to renormalize these this reducible diagrams. Let me explain uh, in a more pictorial, it, it, it is somehow exaggerated diagram, which is impossible, it is really impossible to do. But uh, uh, in order to renormalize this, for example, complicated, hypothetical diagram, we should replace this loop, which is uh, divergent or cutoff independent. We should replace it with appropriate counter terms, counter term here. But uh, as uh, we have shown, this new counter term, this counter term should be uh, added in, a, in the form of non-local counter term in order for the sake of systematic renormalization. Uh, but there, there, this was just some motivation from practical point of view, but there is some physical, deep physical reason behind this uh, problem. As Walter said in his, told us in his talk, the decoupling of scales guarantee locality in time and space. But as you have, uh, as you can show, before reaching the virialization viral scale, the short modes evolve with the same time scale, H inverse, as the line modes. Hence, we should expect the counter terms to be generally non-local in time. This is the point. This is the physical point behind, the, behind it. So, for example, this is uh, one non-local the first non-local uh, counter term introduced to renormalize the power spectrum, one new power spectrum. As uh, Matthias told us, it should be a start by K square and some divergence of uh, some, uh, uh, the, the sigma of uh, short modes, which Matthias called them error modes, sigma of error. Uh, okay. Mm. What? We should be careful about the non-local terms. We should, uh, uh, we should introduce, we should involve non-local terms in the, our theory in a way, in such a way that these terms respect the symmetry of the, of the theory. The most important symmetry of the theory is Galilean symmetry. You can simply check that every time derivative in the uh, equation uh, will be accompanied with uh, uh, v dot gradient term. This is called the convective derivative or total derivative. Mm, th uh, this is what uh, naturally uh, arises, what, what naturally show up in a Lagrangian perturbation theory. In the Eulerian per per perturbation theory, it's not so vivid, but in Lagrangian perturbation theory, naturally, this convective uh, di uh, derivative show up in the equation. So, if we are going to take into account non-local integrals, non-local integrals should respect the symmetry, and so should be, in, uh, should be all of the integrals should be, ta uh, should be taken along the large scale flow, large flow, bulk flow of the uh, matter. 
this is the, this concept, the difference between Eulerian and Lagrangian is depicted in this nice figure but by Ogo Bertello, I don't know. We'll see. But these shift terms uh, do an important thing for us. Mm, taking, into, uh, taking into account, uh, uh, sh uh, taking into account, uh, 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 integrating a long, uh, large bulk flow of the bulk flow of the matter, uh, it's guarantee for us that uh, uh, this uh, naturally somehow naturally renormalized some higher order uh, diagrams which contains these which contain these two vertices. You, as you can remember, if you can remember these two vertices, I told you that I will come back to these two terms. These two terms are called shift terms, shift diagrams, shift vertices, I, which is depicted here. These shift, shift vertices are just here to change a constant Eulerian x to flow x to convective x, to Lagrangian x. And so by considering, by taking into account, taking into account, uh, integrating along the large flow, uh, along, along the larger scale flow of the matter, this, uh, the higher order uh, uh, diagrams which contain these vertices automatically uh, renorm will be renormalized. Re but what about the new uh, genuine uh, higher order terms, which, is, which are not one particle irreducible or which does not, which, uh, which are uh, neither, which are neither one particle irreducible nor uh, contain shift terms, shift interactions, what we have shown in the previous uh, slide. What about these? New diagrams. This new diagram, uh, calculating this diagram is, is, is very cumbersome, uh, somehow cumbersome and painful <laughs> stuff. Uh, the, we have to use a lot of mathematical, as Walter said, we have to, and sometimes mathematical becomes tired and <laughs> start doing something bad. But mathematical, and but thanks to efforts of Wolfram, today the algebraic manipulation of these integr integrals becomes feasible. <laughs> You can find, please check his bibliography on, the, uh, on uh, Wikipedia here. Received his, his PhD at the age of 20. It's very fantastic. <laughs> he was part of a physicist. So, <laughs> by the way. New counter terms. Without going to the details, I can tell you the message of my talk is that the new counter terms uh, is made of uh, locally measurable, measurable quantities which are this both, this, uh, this uh, contribution, this, uh, uh, this combination of the fields, DIDJ of phi, Newtonian uh, potential, and the shear, which is round IVJ. All of the new counter terms, which uh, we have to add as new counter terms to the equation of motion in order to renormalize the F our theory are just made of these two combinations of uh, the fields and uh, derivatives. And we can simply show that, for example, I, I've listed here some first order, second order, all first order, second order, third order uh, counter terms can be found uh, can be found of these combinations here, and uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, teeny point here. Uh, the, in order to find the actual counter term which enters in the equation of motion, there uh, we need one overall derivative and another floating derivative. For, for example, here, uh, these new counter terms are integrated along uh, x of flow, as I discussed before. And uh, there is one floating uh, divergence and overall, diver uh, overall uh, derivative. One uh, uh, floating derivative. Uh, by the way, as a proof of principle, uh, let me conclude my talk. As a proof of principle, we investigate the feasibility of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of having a, a systematic prescription for renormalization of the effective field theory of less, uh, larger scale structure. In a sense, I told you before. 
And uh, we, we, we showed you, I've showed you, you know, my type the correction to the equation of motion, R1 overall derivative, another floating derivative acting on product of locally measurable quantities. By the way, uh, for practical reasons, for uh, if one is, in, one is interested in locally, local in time, uh, Counter terms, it's completely, you, you can completely integrate all of the time the derivatives and uh, all of the time uh, dependencies and find local counter terms which we introduced on, in, my, in our paper in, uh, at the expense of the systematic renormalization, which means that these local counter terms are no longer applicable for the systematic renormalization process. Thank you. <laughs>